and uh, we sort of fool the client into connecting to this endpoint, to, to our socket and not to the real server. And we do that by using the DNS 6 to 4. So I'll just uh, um, I'll walk through the steps of what actually happens when the client wants to connect. Suppose the client wants to connect to a site, uh, let's call it, um, I don't know, HR Web. So um, the client usually sends um, in regular DA scenario, or generally, I mean, uh, the client would send um, a request to the corporate uh, DNS server and would ask for the IP address of, um, of HR Web. Suppose this is uh, HR Web. Uh, so um, it would uh, send a request and would get back um, an IPv uh, IPv6 address because we're in regular scenarios we hope that the client would connect with IPv6. But in our case, uh, instead of getting a quad A response, the quad A response is a response that you get for um, IPv6 addresses. Uh, you'll just get an an A response. Uh, so what we have is actually a component called DNS six to four. That component actually works as a proxy. So when the client sends his DNS request, he doesn't send them directly to the DNS server. He actually sends them to the DNS 624. And that component actually catches the request, sends two requests to the DNS server, one for A and one for quad A. If it receives only an A response, then he knows that the server here is an, IPv4, an IPv4 server. And then um, it actually fakes the answer and creates an endpoint uh, for the um, for the client to connect to with uh, a given prefix, uh, and an IPv6 prefix is basically uh, 128 uh, uh, 128 bits uh, long. So actually, the NAT, uh, which is basically configured behind the scene, you don't need to do anything for it to work. But we actually behind the scene allocate a 96 um, a 96 uh, bit length uh, prefix. And um, we'll add to it the 32-bit uh, result that you got um, uh, from, the, from the A record. And that address would come back to the client. The client would then connect to, will try to connect to that uh, IPv6 address. And then the NAT624 would catch that request and create, a, uh, create the relevant socket. Catch that and create another socket and pump the information between the client and the server. The actual creation of the socket is, is, is being done only when the request uh, actually arrives. And this is how we, uh, we sort of fake the, um, we fake, uh, the IPv6 uh, address on the UAG and catch it using, uh, and actually fool the client using the DNS 624. So uh, the DNS 624 is tell the client to connect to a fake IPv6 address. The IPv6 address exists on the UAG and basically pumps the uh, information between the IPv4 uh, the IPv4 socket that connects to the server and the IPv6 uh, socket that connects you to the client. So if I'm a you know I'm connected on my laptop in you know a, a coffee shop or something and and I and I submit you know my DNS request, how, how does my laptop know to send it to the DNS64 server and not to the the local DNS server that's been recommended by the hotspot? Right, so actually there's a short answer and a long answer. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the short answer is that basically uh, there's something in Windows 7 called NRPT. Uh, and NRPT component is a client component that enables you to redirect uh, DNS requests based uh, on suffixes and redirect them to, uh, to a specific DNS server. So basically if, you're, um, if your uh, organization is contoso.com, um, so You'd probably want to have um, you probably want to have this in your NRPT table, and then whenever you send requests to any of the internal servers, which naturally end with contasa.com, it will forward them to the DNS 624. That's the short answer. Okay. <laughs> a bit longer answer is that um, actually these uh, these configuration get to the client by uh, by means of um, by means of uh, group policy. So initially, when the client was inside the corporate network, at first, at the bootstrap process, he got a group policy uh, configuration. And that group policy uh, configured it to connect to certain places, uh, the, to the Teredo, to all. It gave it the IPsec uh, configuration of DA. And it also configured it with the right NRPT uh, configuration. And that's, that's the long answer of how um, your client knows how to connect to the 
uh, DNS 624. And, and how does it know it's talking to the right DNS 64? I mean, I, I can envision a scenario where, you know, some malicious person would, you know, spoof a, a DNS 64 server. How, you know, how is that connection being secured so my client knows it's talking to the right DNS server? Right. So uh, the entire the entire communication with the um, with the gateway is being secured by um, is being secured by an uh, an IPsec uh, tunnel, and that IPsec tunnel protects all the traffic, including the DNS 64. Uh, it, it would include also uh, your your um, your regular communication to the DNS server if you weren't using the UAG DNS 64, and it protects the DNS 64 traffic as well. It's pretty much the same way. Uh, so uh, this is how it's being protected, and uh, the configuration on the client—it's just uh, you got it through group policy. So uh, unless someone sort of becomes an admin on your machine and changes the configuration, uh, there's no way of actually spoofing the uh, the DNS uh, 624 address and uh, the communication, like I said, is being secured, so uh, it's uh, it's safe proof. It's proof, yeah. Okay. So I, I understand how my client is now connecting to you know to IPv4 or, or even IPv6 servers on you know internally. Uh, you mentioned a couple other capabilities like you know integrating with network access protection. Right. Uh, are there other components on the UAG that are enabling this scenario, and, and how do they come into play? Well, um, the the large three um, DA specific components are an NLB component that enables you to do load balancing of DA uh, that you need uh, um, you need a special uh, um, logic there in, or, in order to do NLB for DA. You got the DNS six two four, the NAT six two four, and uh, a part of that um, you got the whole regular UAG components, which uh, which is the central storage, which I mentioned. And there are um, and there is a commenter and some other uh, uh, voodoo uh, component that enable uh, UAG to work. Um, other than that, there's no um, there's no special uh, components that we add on top of what's existing in UAG. Um, our, there is the UAG management code that enables you, for instance, to create the right IPsec policies for NAP, and this is how we integrate uh, with NAP. And uh, we do have an um, we have a, um, a, a, a scum pack uh, for uh, w which we which would be part of uh, of the UAG offering for uh, DA, and that's not sitting on that box. Uh, and so I guess um, so I guess it's not it's it's sort of a component, but it's not it's not uh, something you must have on the box in order for it to work. So I guess these are the three important uh, components and uh, what's already there with UAG. Okay. So in deploying with this scenario, deploying a UAG and direct access together, I get the uh, I get the ability to do the uh, the network load balancing. Uh, I get the high availability, the scalability. I can integrate with uh, network access protection, and and I get the uh, support for legacy IPv4 applications. Yeah. Uh, plus, you also get your um, you know there's one uh, one thing that I I could have mentioned. There's also the TMG firewall on the machine, which I almost left out. Uh, the TMG uh, is the technology that we use for uh, firewall protection, and uh, that's, um, I guess, that's a strong and proven uh, technology that's based on the ISA technology. So we also put it on the box. So in that sense, you also get uh, very strong uh, uh, protection from the TMG. So that's another thing that you get, and I forgot. And uh, the last thing is basically uh, the fact that. Um, the UAG as a solution, it comes in uh, in software flavor, but it also comes in uh, hardware flavor. Uh, so you could uh, actually buy um, you could buy a UAG box from one of our partners, and then you also get a, a pre-configured uh, uh, machine, and that's uh, I guess also a sort of a, um, reason why someone would want to choose uh, UAG uh, as a solution because it's already comes in a hardened uh, hardware box. Okay, so if I want a, a you know a simpler way to deploy direct access and and get this quickly out to my users, this seems like a a great solution. I can see why you guys have in, invested the time and resources in making this happen. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we've already seen uh, some customers use it, and uh, I think they're pretty happy with the um, uh, with what uh, UAG brings to the table uh, around DA. And uh, yeah, we're very proud of it. Oh, great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing it. Thanks for your time today. Okay, thanks a lot.